Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the lecture on COVID-19 and racism. This is part three of three. And in closing, we're going to take stock of the major themes that we covered in today's lecture by highlighting some theoretical tools and concepts that are useful for understanding the relationship between COVID-19 and racism. And due to uh, limitations on time and the fact that this is a very broad survey course, we unfortunately can't go too deeply into these themes and ideas, but you are very, very welcome and encouraged to explore the catalog of courses that are being offered in the sociology department uh, on a range of issues that have been raised throughout this course. Now, the first theoretical takeaway point is that discourse plays a very important role in shaping how we see our social world. And for those of you who haven't come across this term before, we can think about discourse drawing on theorist Michel Foucault as an institutionalized way of speaking or writing about reality in a way that defines what can legitimately claimed to be knowledge and what cannot. And paying attention to power dynamics is key here. People in positions of power accordingly have more power to promulgate the discourses that privilege their preferred world views, their takes on social reality, their ideas of what is just and what is not. This means that when anti-Asian sentiments are expressed, not just by everyday Canadians and Americans, but by influential politicians and figures in society, they are in effect creating a world in which Asians are associated with the threat of disease, in this case, the coronavirus, and that it is justified to act out against them in exclusionary and violent ways. This is what we're seeing in our local communities and across North America with the rise in the outward expressions of anti-Asian racism, which are condemned by many, yes, but also condoned by a select few in power who wish to sow division between so-called Canadians and so-called foreigners. And the second concept related to this last point is that nation states aren't just territorial bodies. By that I mean nations aren't just surrounded by territorial borders from the west to the east coast, but they are bounded by symbolic boundaries. During the pandemic, now and throughout Canadian history, Political actors have worked to impose symbolic boundaries between insiders, namely Anglo-Canadians, and outsiders, namely racialized minorities such as Chinese immigrants and people of Chinese and Asian descent. These symbolic boundaries, for example, that have been imposed by discourses that portray Chinese immigrants as culturally backwards, morally deficient, untrustworthy and therefore unable and unwilling to assimilate have been drawn in order to justify policies that keep Chinese immigrants out of Canada. And in the past, just as in the present, boundaries are also being drawn by racializing the coronavirus. And in turn, as legal scholar Jamie Liu puts it in a chapter linked at the bottom of this PowerPoint by viralizing Asian bodies. In March, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that the Canadian government would be closing its borders to non-essential travel in efforts to prevent the virus from being carried into the country. And upon first glance, this might seem like a politically neutral policy move that has been 
made in the name of public health. Dr. Teresa Tam, however, has stated that the idea of shutting down Canada's borders to international travel wasn't in the playbook of most public health experts. By shutting out non-essential travel, what the government is doing is reinforcing the historically rooted idea that foreigners, specifically Asians, are an epidemiological threat that should be excluded from Canada. Now, going forward, I want us all to consider how public health responses to the pandemic, such as border shutdowns and travel restrictions, may, inadvertently or not, fortify symbolic boundaries between who is us and who is them, and allow long-standing xenophobic sentiments to spread like a virus. Looking back at Canadian history can give us insight into the kinds of long-lasting repercussions for our understandings of national identity and belonging that can result from these actions that are done in the name of public health. Now that's it from me. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you so much for listening to this lecture, and I wish you the very best of luck in the rest of this course and your time at UBC.